Nazum Rita is a member of Oropo College of Scholar. She's also a certified community health practitioner, currently working with Ashaka Hospital, Wari Delta State. She's also an entrepreneur and um, she's scouting for opportunities. So, Miss. So, Ms. Chinazon, the floor is open for your presentation. Ms. Chinazon, are you with us? No, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Chica, for that warm reception. And welcome. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to 10th or a portion. I'll be speaking on the topic that says infection prevention and control in maternal and neonatal care. My presentation outline as follows Introduction mode of transmission of maternal and neonatal care, causative agents of maternal and neonatal infection. Please, we can't hear you so well. Can you increase the okay. tempo? All right, all right. Presentation outlines as follows. Introduction, mode of transmission of maternal and neonatal infection, causative agents of maternal and neonatal infection, Identification and prevention of maternal and neonatal infection. Infection prevention and control practices in the healthcare system. Conclusion and references. I'm talking about maternal and neonatal care. The first thing that comes to one's mind is mother and a newborn, a mother and a child. And maternal and neonatal care is a special attention a special care that is being given to a mother and a newborn in order to prevent an infection, any preventable infection in the environment. As we all know that globally, infection is, global infection is responsible for maternal and neonatal mortality and morbidity rates. So for this reason, that, for this reason, there is a need for a good attention, a special care to a mother and a newborn child, especially during the first week of their life, I mean the newborn uh, child, in order to prevent this infection, to reduce the death that, that is in high rate. Current approaches to precluding early diagnosis and appropriate management are limited by the proper knowledge and awareness of healthcare workers. Naturally, our environment is filled with microorganisms that can cause an infection. And because of this, there is a high need that healthcare workers, the healthcare practitioners have a good knowledge on how to prevent as well as control infection in this set of people, that is the maternal and neonatal care. Neonatal infection can be caused by several, I mean, maternal and neonatal infection can be caused by several bacteria, viral and parasitic agents. In neonates, the available data indicate that gram-negative rod are the major cause of infection in any, <clears throat> sorry, in any neonates, that is the, in the first week of their life. According to World Health Organization, infection prevention and control, that is IPC, is a practical evidence-based approach which prevents patients and healthcare workers from being harmed by avoidable infection, as well as antimicrobial uh, resistance. Now we are meant to understand here by World, World Health Organization that it is not only the mother and the child is being prevented from contracting an infection, even the healthcare workers are also at the risk of contracting this infection, maybe as a process of caring for these patients, especially when they are, especially when the patients are infected with one disease or the other the healthcare workers also stand a chance of contracting an infection if care is not taken, if the healthcare worker is not, is not properly managed or herself. 
An effective infection prevention and control program improves patient safety and the quality of patient care and reduces adverse socioeconomic and psychological impact of infectious disease to the patient and the health system generally. The mode of transmission of maternal and neonatal infection. Now, infection is a successful transmission of pathogens. That is when a pathogen is able to have into, a, into the body by killing the soldier bodies, which is the white blood cells. If the microorganism is able to invade the body, subduing the soldier bodies, the white blood cells, that is when we know that infection has already invaded the body. And such things that causes an infection is bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Infection can be acquired from mother by the neonate through the following. Number one, which centrally as in when a baby is in the womb, the connection that a child has with the mother is through the placenta. It is through the placenta that the baby feeds, even when the baby defecates, receives an oxygen. So possibly in the same way, the child can also contract any infection that the mother already has. So through placenta, a mother can infect a child. Number two, birth canal during delivery. When um, this kind of thing always happen when the membrane, when there is early uh, rupture of membrane and the mother has some infection, maybe candidiasis in the birth canal in the passage because the birth canal is the passage in which the baby comes. So when there is an infection in the mother's birth canal and the membrane that is the kind of protecting the child has ruptured and the baby has not come for maybe there is a prolonged labor you find out that the baby can easily take an infection even even if the baby was not able to take the infection from, through the placenta in this uh, medium the baby can take up an infection or any ascending infection in the environment maybe in the labor world can as well meet the baby and this can cause death number three external source after childbirth that is coming in contact with mothers who have tuberculosis or people that will come to visit the child after delivery a lot of them will come with so many things and the, the fact that the child has not been able to develop her own or his uh, immunity to fight for any infection the child can easily mm -hmm. accept an infection through contact of anybody that is around the child even from the healthcare personnel causative agent of maternal and neonatal infection, common viral and bacterial agents of, common, uh, sorry, common viral and maternal, sorry, bacterial agents of maternal and neonatal infections include herpes simplex virus. Um, this herpes simplex virus is a viral disease and mm. it has a lot of signs and symptoms and is categorized in two, in two ways, HVS1, this HVS1 is being contracted by contacts than through uh, cough uh, droplets. And the HVS2 is being contracted through uh, sexually, as in through sex. When you have a sex or when the mother has a sex with um, infected person, the mother maybe before getting pregnant, the mother is liable to contract this HVS2. And one of the signs and symptoms uh, of this uh, virus is sores around the mouth, that is, if it is the oral, that is the heaviest one. The, one of the signs and symptoms is sore around the mouth. Then if it is heaviest too, another signs and symptom is sore around the genitals of the child. When it is in neonate, you see sores, red sores, and this can cause a lasting neurogeni a neurogenical disability or death in a child. Then number two is human immunodeficiency virus. Uh, this is no longer a new virus. It's, it's all over the place. And every mother that has this virus tends to transmit it to the child if proper care is not taken. Um, number three, cytomegalovirus, the CMV. The CMV is almost the same thing as this uh, HVS. Um, it's most of the time, it comes as measles, 
to the child. But when a mother already have it, because this CMV does not normally show any sign. It doesn't show any sign for any carrier, in any carrier. It's only when the woman is pregnant, that is when the signs com comes up. Number four, we have hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B, vi uh, B virus causes jaundice in children and it damages the liver. Next slide. Identification and prevention of maternal and neonatal infection. Identification and prevention of maternal and neonatal infection starts from the adnental clinic. That is why every uh, healthcare personnel or healthcare worker needs to encourage every pregnant woman to register for adnental at least the 12 weeks of gestation so that early management of any infection or, uh, uh, can start. Routine adnental care provides a platform for important healthcare infection. Adnental care improves health outcome for both women and the newborn and is a unique opportunity for pro promoting a positive pregnancy experience. Now, in adnental care, uh, the healthcare personnel will screen the patient. If a patient comes with some signs and one, uh, sorry, signs, the the, it is the duty of the healthcare worker to screen that patient for a particular um, uh, infection, maybe like anemia, HIV, or syphilis, depending on the signs that the patient presents uh, or the, uh, the sign that the patient uh, comes with. It is the duty of that uh, healthcare worker to send the, the patient for a lab to be able to verify the, the actual thing or the actual infection that the patient is harboring prevent and treat the infection. Now, after finding out the, the, the infection the patient is harboring, you prevent it from transmitting it to the child and as well as treat it and uh, uh, end the, any possible effect. You cancel the patient, inform and empower women to protect themselves and their babies against infection. And also advise them, especially when the child in the, in the first week of the uh, in the first week of the life of the baby, you always advise them not to allow crowd to come close to the, to the newborn because the newborn has not developed enough immunity to fight against infection. He's still living under the mother's uh, in, uh, immunity. As well as you also advise the patient uh, when to seek for help or whenever he see a particular sign or danger, you advise him, you, uh, educate him on the signs of those infections and advise the patient on when to seek for, for, for help. IPC practices in healthcare setting. Infection prevention and control practices in healthcare settings include hand washing by the bed attendant. It is the sole responsibility of the bed attendant to always wash their hands whenever they are coming in contact with patients. Because like I said earlier, the, the environment is filled with um, microorganisms that cause infections and those infections can as well lead to death. So the healthcare workers are being encouraged to always watch their hand whenever they want to come in contact with the patient, like whenever they want to do a vagina examination when the patient is in labor, or even whenever they want to check the patient, it is their duty and they are being encouraged to watch their hand. Number two, disinfection and sterilization of reusable equipment. All reusable equipment in the healthcare settings need to be disinfected and as well as sterilize it because most of the equipment that is being used is not used by one person. And if it is not properly sterilized or properly disinfected, you Hello, can you hear me? Um, if um, uh, sorry, okay. If the 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 equipment or the instrument that is being used in the healthcare settings are not properly sterilized or disinfect, you find out that infection will, will move from one patient to another. Even the health uh, care workers that are taking care of the, the patients. So we, it is important that those reusable equipment are being properly sterilized. There is a time limit for sterilization, you have to make sure that those uh, equipment get to that uh, uh, time limit. 
minimization of vaginal examination during during labor. This also applicable to the birth attendant. You find uh, most of the cases you see uh, women that uh, came into labor with pains and all that, and they'll be calling you to come and check them and all that. You don't have to always go and do v that is vaginal uh, examination because uh, it also leads to ascending infection that is within the environment and that will affect the, the, the child even before the child arrives. So the healthcare workers has to be very vigilant about it. You always check them when it is necessary and when it is due. Forget about the way they call on you and the way they shout, but you do it when it is necessary in order to prevent um, infection. Prompt diagnosis and treatment of prolonged labor. In this case, especially when the membrane has been ruptured and the labor is being delayed, you, you have to act fast because the child does not have anything that is sustaining him or her in the womb there. So you have to uh, act fast, take decision immediately and to, uh, to reduce this um, uh, uh, infection. Um, number five, maternal and neonatal immunization. The, the first presenter has already talked much on immunization. So our duty is to encourage the mother and uh, as an encourage the mother to go for immunization and even immunize herself. Like those um, mothers with HIV, uh, CMDS and all that, you encourage them to always go for their immunization to reduce any possible transmission, to reduce any infection that, can, that might be transmitted to the child. And as well as uh, uh, encourage the mother to go through all the immunizations that, are, that were listed out for the baby. Then number six, exclusive breastfeeding. Exclusive uh, uh, breastfeeding also helps in, um, in fighting infection. So as well as, as well, you have to encourage the mother also to give breast milk for at least six months before you now introduce any winning food to the child. Because um, according to all the uh, organization, it is believed that the first uh, uh, breast milk that comes out from the mother's breast serve as an antigen, I mean, antibody to the child to fight against any infection that is in the environment or any infection that the child might come in contact with. That is why exclu exclusive breastfeeding is very, very important. And mothers need to be encouraged to embark on that. Safe, in uh, safe injection practices. Safe injection practices. Whenever you use an injection, you don't have um, needles and all that. You don't have to reuse it again. You have to dispose it carefully the way it's supposed to be. Because if you litter it around, it might prick someone else. And if those uh, needles are being used for somebody that is infected, you can as well uh, transfer infection to another person. Uh, clean cord care. Mothers have to be taught on how to take care of the cord of their child because that cord of the child serves as an opening where infection can as well enter the child's body. Mothers have to be taught on how to take care of the cord, tell them to wash their hands whenever they want to clean the cord, always clean the cord every three, three hours so that there will not be any infection that uh, the, the child can uh, uh, contract. In, in conclusion, if infection prevention and control is very important in the care of mother and newborn. For this reason, there should be an inclusion of IPC training, IPC training program in all healthcare systems, whether private or government, as this will enhance the knowledge and the awareness of healthcare workers on how to prevent, on how to diagnose, and as well as effectively manage diseases due to maternal uh, and neonatal infection. Let's also take note of this, that if um, the healthcare workers are not properly informed, you, you, you will find out that the things that we are fighting for, you find out that it keep on happening. That is why the healthcare workers are the main people that need to be trained because when they have the good knowledge and awareness, they will now pass the information to the mothers what to expect 
especially those who are already affected, like those who already have um, HIV, those who already have syphilis and all that. So you, 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 you inform them on time, you teach them and as well as educate them and also prevent future um, infection on the newborn because uh, as a newborn, the child is not expected to just come out and start suffering. So it is the duty of the healthcare workers, especially when they are being trained properly or when they have the, 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 the good, uh, the maximum awareness on how to manage these sets of people you find out that the, the mobility and the mortality rate in this set of people will reduce because they are always uh, uh, vulnerable to infection due to their low immunity. And also this also will also reduce the high rate of preterm delivery, stillbirth and congenital mal malfunction, sorry, malformation in neonate references. Thank you.